Good morning and happy Saturday, everybody. Good morning and happy Saturday, everybody. This is going to be hopefully part three and the final part of a lane machine tune up. We've got a 2018 Flex Walker. Um, I kind of did a dumb and refilled all the water and the cleaner and the oil. Um, so now I have to pump all of that fluid out of the machine. So we're gonna go ahead, I've got a bucket set up here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and remove the cleaner dispensing tip and we're gonna go into the input output menus and uh, just turn the water pump on and drain the tank out. So it's main menu, more menus, input output test, forward to water and cleaner pump, uh, water pump test button, pump is enabled. It's gonna take a little while for all of that water to pump out of the tank. Um, and then we're gonna pump our cleaner concentrate and then we're gonna empty our oil reservoirs. Uh, we're gonna start with the cleaning section. Um, we're gonna pull that out, we're gonna flush the tanks. We're gonna put new filters in there. Um, we are going to pull the oil section, take the cover off so that you guys can see what's in there. Uh, I've gone through that pretty extensively over the last six months, so I don't have any service needs in that area of the machine, but I think it would be cool to pull it apart um, and show what's in there. Uh, the other thing I'd like to do is pull the vacuum motor out and put new vacuum motor brushes in. It's been a couple years, so I'm sure they're due. Um, I want to say this is year number two, so we didn't do them last year. Maybe we did them last summer. I don't remember. I wrote it down somewhere. I'd have to go find out. Um, I'm not going to do buffer motor brushes or drive brushes this year because they were done last year. Um, but I do have some. They don't come in the tune-up kit anymore. That's okay. If you're planning on doing motor brushes, you're going to have to order uh, extra brushes above and beyond your tune-up kit. And it was explained to me because there are a few different brands of motors on the market right now that they don't want to, you know, and you don't need to change them out every single year. Uh, but you do want to open the caps up and blow the carbon build up uh, that builds up inside of the motor um, so that your motors operate correctly. So I'm going to quit talking. I'm going to put this on pause. I'm going to come back when the water tank and the cleaner tanks have been emptied. So while we're literally waiting for water to drain out of the tanks, hold on, uh, while we're waiting for the water to drain out, Let's cover what we're gonna do today. We've got cleaner and water tank vents. We have a buffer motor relay. I don't remember the last time I changed this out. So we're gonna do it. Um, these fittings go on the end of your oil pressure uh, gauges. Sometimes they leak. Ours are not. I know that I had a center or a stop up in Snohomish where these were leaking. Um, so it does happen. These are good to have. Let's zoom in on the part number, 1540257. Make sure you have some of those in stock. These high temperature silicone rubber O-rings, uh, 1646173. I just replaced those in that machine probably like six months ago so we don't need them. We've got a screen protector. I don't remember the last time I changed the protector on the touch screen, so we're gonna do that. Um, oil tank, check valves, little tiny inline check valves. We can go ahead and do that. I don't remember the last time they were done. Again, water tank, cleaner tank, filters, back motor brushes, and oil uh, filters for the oil reservoirs. Those are good. Uh, again, this won't be going in, that won't be going in, and that won't be going in. So out of the tune-up kit, 99% of the parts are going in and have already been installed. Awesome. 
All right, so our water tank is empty. Our cleaner reservoir looks to be in really good shape. Um, the filter screen is shiny and clean. Um, the water tank, however, needs a little bit of work. It's starting to get some like sludge or mildew buildup in there. Um, and the filter screen is getting a little plugged up. So we're going to go ahead and pull that out. I need to see if I need pliers. I'm going to bring them with me just in case. We might need them. We might not. Um, there are two thumb screws in here. Uh, I use the word thumb screws. But over time, with cleaner and water splashing around, if it spills, you can cor corrode the threads. And uh, they will no longer be uh, thumb screws. <laughs> yeah we're in good shape here I put a little bit of anti-seize on these threads every once in a while just to make sure that they stay in good shape and they don't get um, too badly corroded so what we're gonna do we've got a float switch here for our cleaner tank oh we're gonna stop the machine as well and we've got a fitting, a little inline quick connect here. We're going to remove it on the, uh, we're going to pull the tubing out from my left hand side. And we're going to extract the tubing from underneath the tank light micro switch. So our float switch is disconnected, our cleaner concentrate tubing is disconnected. There's another Molex plug back here for um, the tank light and what we're going to do now is going to try and lift this gently up and out and we will have access to the water reservoirs water hose as well as our water float switch I know this is probably not the best angle you can't really see down in there but this is what we have to work with for right now. All right. So our cleaner and water tank assemblies are now out. Uh, let's go ahead. I'll get you guys set up uh, here on the bench so you can see a little bit better what's going on. For this section, I'm gonna hang you guys on the wall. Um, it's gonna be the best way to get a good view of what's going on. These two bolts are coming out and there are two bolts on the back side that will come out and this will allow our water tank to separate from this assembly. Uh, I don't want to um, have this thing sideways for too long. Um, it's already leaking on the back side here. Crap. Okay, well let me reposition. We'll take a look at the back side screws got her flipped around the uh, two screws that we're going to take out on the rear side are going to be located here and here uh, we have this thing laying on its back with a full cleaner concentrate tank so it started leaking out um, what I'm going to do is wipe everything down dry uh, but first we're going to get our water tank separated from the assembly going to slide out just like that. So the water tank's going to go right there. I've got a five gallon bucket right off camera that I'm using to prop that thing vertically uh, while we're doing this. I'm going to start this by pulling the uh, check valve and screen out. Um, I was debating whether or not to replace this, but now I'm sure that I am. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's starting to get a little funky. Uh, this is going to be our water, you dusty, water filter. Behind it is the float switch. We're not going to mess with that. I believe we need 11 sixteenths for our filter screen. Correct. So let's go ahead and get that out. And I'll show you guys what the filter looks like. And then we're gonna flush the tank out. 
Um, I like to use ice cubes. I know some people have suggested using uh, BBs for bearings. Like if you're on A2 machines, you just put a bunch of turret ring BBs in there and slosh it around. Jimmy Land taught me this trick. Shout out to Jimmy Land. Um, putting ice. Yeah, you see how uh, gross. Putting ice in here is awesome because if you don't get it all out, all it's going to do is melt. Uh, but if you get BBs stuck in there, you might have some issues. Ew. Good thing I laid this towel down. Uh, yeah. What does Jesse call it? Uh, jellyfish. Bill, it's growing jellyfish in there. Yeah, yummy. <laughs> and here's my bucket of ice. This is the not interesting part. Um, I'll save you guys some time. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna take half this ice now, feed it in there, shake it up, flush it with some warm water, and then do it again. And I will bring you guys back in once that is done. All right, we are back. I had a arcade game issue to take care of real quick. We're gonna separate the base of our filter from our fitting for our tubing line. Clean all of the old Teflon tape off. Going to bring in our new filter. Um, wrap it with some Teflon tape. Hold on, let me move right there. Uh, where's the end of this roll? Right here it looks like. Good. Okay. These threads are tapered. Um, I always err on the side of caution and use some thread tape just because I don't want any surprise leaks or anything down the road. Um, I don't like pulling this thing apart any more than I have to. So that's going to go in. Get in there. Okay. Threads are started. This doesn't need to be super duper tight. Uh, it needs to be watertight. This is not a pressurized system. And uh, we don't want to over tighten these screws or those threads. We don't want to stress it out too much. If I can get, I got a little bit more Teflon tape on here. I got to take off of the uh, fitting. Please come out. Thank you. Um, yeah, that looks good. Just going to get a little bit. You can't tell if those threads are tapered or not. They kind of look tapered. Either way, it's going to get new thread tape just because because I want to guarantee that it won't leak. And this is a good way to guarantee that. Okay, let's start that one in. Again, these are plastic threads. We cannot apply a boatload of torque to them. It's not a pressurized system. We are looking just basically for watertight. Right there. I think that's going to be good. All right, so our tank filter has been replaced. Our fitting is back on. Um, the last step. Let me flip this around. Uh, I want to pull this elbow out here for the tank vent because there's, uh, I don't know if it's coming. This end has got some mildew in there. So I'm wondering, I want to check that and make sure there's no mildew 
in that end either. Huh, 7 sixteenths is too big. 3 eighths? Yes. Oh, no. Um, hold on. Oh, boy. Uh, this isn't coming out. <laughs> this is... That's stuck. I can't get that out, and I'm not going to risk breaking it. So, uh, mm, change of plans. Uh, I didn't get that on camera, but there was a booger in there. I, uh, I put my mouth over this and blew on it. Um, damn, probably not the best way to do it, but it's cleared out. It's clean. Um, yeah, that was kind of gross. New tank filter, not filter, check valve. Oh, I'm going to check the check valve. I'm going to put my mouth on this end and try and pull air in. There was an install I did where this check valve had been installed in the tubing backwards. Um, yep, I can draw air in and I can't push air out. So this tank vent check valve is good. All right, well, nobody was looking. I slid the tank back in and I'm gonna start the screws. Um, on the back side of the assembly and then we'll well you know what change of plans let's get these started and then we will get the screws on the front side started and then we'll tighten everything up I think that makes more sense and I'm going to have to do this standing up because I don't want to dump out more cleaner concentrate um, I just got done wiping this thing down. Uh, let's not do it again if we don't have to. So that's good. There's one. There's two. Flip it around again. Whoa, almost huh. dropped it. I'm gonna tighten our screws back up. This is a number three Phillips head. Okay. All right, so our cleaner and water tank service is almost done. The last step in this process is going to be replacing our um, cleaner concentrate check valve. Again, checking. Check valve is in the correct orientation. Awesome. Good. All right, we're going to drop this back in the machine and refill the water. Okay, water tank coming back in. What I like to do is I will set it on the head rail very carefully. And then I'm gonna put our water, water tubing back in. Okay. And we're gonna put our, whoa, our water float switch back in. Please come back together, thank you. Okay. All right, now we're gonna cradle it into position, carefully and gently, okay. So we're seated, but still pitched forward. Let's bring our tank light micro switch connection back together. Feed the uh, cleaner concentrate line under the micro switch for the tank lights and bring that union back together. can't tell if the tubing has seated because my hands are slimy with uh, cleaner concentrate. Here. 
grab a set of pliers and we'll hold the uh, tubing with pliers. There we go. Okay. I got a wire pinched. It's boost between the rear wall and the tank assembly. Not good. Don't pinch the wires. Bring the uh, cleaner tank float switch back on. Make sure we're positioned properly left to right. And then reinstall the thumb screws. One. And then what we're going to do, we're not going to completely fill the tank. We're going to fill it up with a few inches of water and do a leak check. Once we've passed the leak check, then we can go ahead and uh, fill it up the rest of the way. Oh. <laughs> Tubing is got a little bend to it and the check valve screen wants to uh, run into the tank lid so move that around rotate it so it's facing away let me grab oh I don't have the filter let me grab the filter and we'll fill it up or not the filter the funnel and we'll start filling this tank up all right we got our filter <laughs> I keep saying filter funnel the funnel. The funnel has a filter screen in it. Maybe that's where my brain's going. I don't know. We just need to put a couple inches of water in the bottom of the tank and check for leaks. That should be plenty. If we turn it on, then we can see a lot better. Because this machine has tank lights. Yeah, that looks good. Take a peek down here. Everything's dry. Nothing's dribbling out. That's good. And it's nice and shiny and clean in there. Um, yeah, good, 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 good. Oh! hard to stand back up sometimes. Uh, where are we going next? Let's do vacuum motor. That ought to be fun and interesting. Before I forget, since we opened that line up, we're going to have to purge it. Uh, so we're going to go back into main menu, more menus, Input, output, test, right green arrow, water and cleaner, water pump test button enabled. We're going to look for the dispensing tip over here to stop spitting out air bubbles. And it has. So pump off. Now we're going to go to the cleaner concentrate or test oil cleaner pump volume. Um, cleaner pump calibration and adjustment. Enable test. Water test. We're looking for, book spec is 25 milliliters of water at a 5 to 1 dilution ratio, which is what we're using. So, we're going to hit our start button. Uh, it's all the way over there. Making me be a lefty. Here we go. Fail. <laughs> uh, don't forget to put your tank lid back up out of the way. We jammed the travel of the uh, oil head. Oops. Do over. Everybody makes mistakes. That was me making one. <laughs> Silly mistake. Come on, boot up. All right, let's 
try this again. Main menu. Cleaner. Enable. Test water. Dump our test results. Because they were skewed. Start button. We're looking for 25 milliliters. We're a little short. We're at 23 milliliters. So we're going to hit plus 10 on the bottom of the screen. Mm, 10 times. How about 12 times? That should be a good, a good guess. Let's see if we get up to 25. Still a little short. We got up to 24. So we're going to hit plus 10 10 more times. How about 12? I'm okay if we go just a hair over 25. Not a lot, but just a tiny hair. Yep. We are just a teeny tiny hair over 25, so our water pump is calibrated. Um, I did the cleaner pump two days ago and it was dead on, so I don't really think I'm going to check that right now because I know it's good. Alright, home screen, power off. Now let's gear up for vacuum motor brushes. I've already gone ahead and taken the vacuum motor, or not the vacuum motor, the uh, waste recovery tank out. Uh, we're going to take the hose clamp off at the vacuum motor housing and set that aside. And then we've got uh, the quarter 20 screw, but it is a flat head. And we'll need a 7 16 wrench or socket. And I've got this on an extension so that I have clearance off of the vacuum motor housing. Right, that one's loose but not off or removed. Careful around your PLC. You don't want to damage any wires. All right, loose but not off. We're going to unplug our vacuum motor and then try to remove the hardware. Uh, sometimes I do this with the machine in the upright position. I'm not going to do that today. This is okay. We can make it work either way. Maybe. <laughs> Being a little bit stubborn. Not a lot of room to work. All the hardware has been retrieved. Nothing's lost. We didn't drop anything. So vacuum motor coming out. And I will reposition you guys back to the workbench. So the question that I have at this point is how far down the rabbit hole do we go? What I'm going to do, is if we have time, I think we do now, it's about 1 o'clock. They don't need the lane machine back until closer to 5. We're going to take the vacuum motor apart from the vacuum motor's housing. 
We're going to clean the felt on the inside. We're going to clean the exterior of this. I don't know. So this machine had some liquid that went through the back motor at some point. There's uh, some crud building up in here. Not a lot. A teeny tiny bit. More than I would really like to see, but it's okay. Sometimes stuff happens. Let's get around our brushes. There we go. And expose our vacuum motor. Oh no, I dropped the screw. I got it. Yeah, this had some fluid. At some point, some fluid went through here. It doesn't look like a lot. Um, it's more than nothing. You can see in the, uh, yeah, a little crusty in there. We're going to wipe it down. We're going to clean it off. Uh, might not do it all on camera, but rest assured that it is getting done. Let's focus on our vacuum motor and our brushes at this point. We might need uh, needle nose pliers. We're going to take the plastic cap off. This is um, kind of tricky sometimes. Oh, well, it's going to get less tricky now because the little plastic clip that holds the uh, black cover on is, uh, it just lost a leg there. <laughs> Oops. Again on this side. All right, covers off. We're going to wash that out too. Um, this is the very, 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 very tricky part. And if you're not careful, you can do some pretty serious damage here. I'm hoping to avoid that. Um, number two, Phillips head screwdriver. Let me get you guys a better view here. Hold on. So what we're going to do, we've got a Phillips head screw here er, and here. There's one for the other brush on the opposite side. We're going to remove those four screws and only that right now. Okay, one side is done already. I'm coming back in for the other side. Okay. Retainer is off. Let's go ahead and open our package of new brushes. Carefully. Very carefully. There is a trick to this that I have found to be fairly helpful. Um, but we can talk about it. I'm not going to be able to get it on camera because I don't have anywhere to set the camera down and I need both hands and a lot of concentration. All right, I've got you guys zoomed in pretty good. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a flat blade screwdriver and wedge it between the plastic and the terminal that wedges in that housing for its electrical connection. Um, don't use pliers, don't use your hands, don't try and yank the wire out. Um, it's in there really, really tight. So you're going to need some kind of leverage prying force right in here to slide that tab out. Uh, it's easier said than done. I have messed this up before. Uh, that's how I know how not to do it. I'll see if I can put the camera back up uh, on the side view here um, and zoom in as far as I can, but this is going to be a difficult thing to get on camera. All right, here goes nothing. Maybe I need a um, slightly bigger flat blade tip here on my super duper pocket screwdriver. Uh, I'm going to try as hard as I can not to mess this up. It's 
working. But I might need a slightly bigger flat blade. It always makes me nervous. Always makes me nervous. I don't have a spare uh, vacuum motor. Slowly working it out. It is coming out. We're getting there. Uh, slowly, 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 slowly. Don't try to force it. Uh, you could cause damage, and that will be bad. Patience. Patience is a virtue. There we go. It has been disconnected. And our tab, our tab is in good shape. All right, so let's compare. Burr, burr. New brushes, the old brushes, about a quarter inch difference, not bad. Could have gone another year, sure. Uh, but, figure maybe you guys wanna see how to do this. And that way, you don't have to wait another year to find out, huh? <laughs> Such a nice guy, huh? Yeah, yeah. Now, well, kind of yeah. <laughs> Sometimes no. <laughs> All right, we're gonna repeat our procedure. Please become disconnected. Uh, yeah. This is one of those things. The faster you try to go, the more likely you are to mess it up. So, have patience. Take your time. Make sure that you're doing a good job. Almost there. There we go. It's out. Again, about a quarter inch. Maybe a little bit shorter on that one. Here, that's the new one. Here's the old one. Yeah, one brush is a little longer on this. That's okay. Cool. All right, those are out. New ones are coming in. Oh, it, oh, it always makes me nervous. Uh, I don't have any... Wait, I do. The compressor is here in the workshop. What we can do... I'll put you guys on pause. We're going to charge the air compressor up. We're going to blow the gunk out of this, and then I'll bring it back in in a few. All right, let's blow all the crud out of here. A little bit. A little bit of build up. Alright, that's good. Clean. Let's get some new to us brushes in here. Um, which way do you go? Ah, slot for our electrical. Right there. Again, easier said than done, but. It is doable. All right, tab is back in. They uh, seem to go in a lot easier than they come out. Bring in. There, it just clicked into place. Grab our Phillips head again. That one started, but not tight yet. We want to get the other one in, too. Okay. Tight. 
tight. Tight. Let's flip this around 180. We'll do the other side. Slot. Tab A into slot B. Come on, tab A. Get in there. Stop fighting. Just go to your home. You don't like your home? No. I, uh, <laughs> 90 degrees off there. Oops. There was no slot where I was trying to shove this in. All right, it started. Now, cram it the rest of the way in there. Please, just smush in. Smushed. Yes, seated. Yes, good. Nice rumba. There. All the way down. <laughs> Go all the way down. Oh my goodness. It's getting warm in here. I turned the fan off because uh, this makes a lot of noise. I don't mind the heat too much, but it is getting a little bit warm in here. Are we seated in there? Yes, we are. Good. Let's send these home. So, the surprise today that you've all been waiting for, well, maybe or maybe not. <laughs> when I asked earlier how far down the rabbit hole did we want to get, um, one of the things I'm considering is splitting this vacuum motor housing open and cleaning the impellers. Um, it's doable. I've done it a lot, but I need to get you guys in a better position to see how I do it. You guys are back up on the tool wall. Um, we're gonna put our cap back on after we've washed everything. Clipped down nicely, excellent. So that's gonna give us a good flat surface so we can turn it over and start cracking this thing open. First thing we are going to need is a 9 deep well socket. 9/16 deep well socket. Mm, that looks better right there. Uh, vice grips are next on the list. Vice grips. Okay. Uh, Allen wrenches. I don't know what size. I don't have it memorized. Let's start with 5/30 seconds. Does that fit? No. Smaller. 9/64. No. One eight. Yes. Good. Here's where it gets a little weird. Um, inside of this, you have a shaft that's threaded with a nut. It's still on there. There it is. Like a quarter of a thread more. All right, nuts out. Uh, flat washer's still in there, but that's okay. We 
can probably get that out later. Maybe. I hope. I don't know. It's my first day. <laughs> use this. I know I cleaned it already and I'm probably going to make it dirty again. Um, Another flat blade screwdriver. Here. Each one of these indentations, and I don't know if they're coming across in camera, but they're peeing down to hold the housing in place. So we need to lift them up. We're bending the metal housing away from the plastic body. And this is going to allow us to slip the housing away from the body. One more and we should be in the ballpark here. Let's see if this is going to separate. Maybe? Yeah, buddy, there it goes. Ding! We're in. Now, let me see if I can retrieve. Yep, there's our washer. We don't want to lose that washer. Do not lose it. Um. If I were really careful, could I peel the uh, these two sections apart? Probably. Uh, what I'm going to do is just slosh it around in our bucket full of cleaner. So we're just going to drop that in. Stage two impeller is coming off. That's going to get clean. This is looking really clean. Um, that doesn't need to go in the dip. And then we're going to wipe out the inside of the impeller housing. There's a little bit of debris in here. It's not great. I would suggest doing this at least once per year uh, to help keep your vacuum motor running in tip-top shape. That looks pretty good. All right, put you guys on pause real quick. Okay. Let's uh, slosh some cleaner through this. I probably need some more. Um, that's a little shallow. Let's bring out our jug of pre-mixed cleaner. This is, again, this is lane cleaner, um, but this is diluted seven to one instead of five to one. That looks good. What's going on? Uh, this is Mike, our facilities manager. So, um, he is working away, uh, doing all the maintenance, deep cleaning the lane machine, all that good stuff. Oh, we're going down the rabbit hole today. Oh, we are? <laughs> on the lane machine, or? Yeah, I leave all that to him. He's a master. <laughs> he is a master. So, uh, Ew. Let me see. I've got a bottle brush here. Right here. My curve is in the wrong direction. I believe we need to go that way. Let me. Yeah. I'm going to brush out the impeller on stage one. It's got some uh, some slime in there, not gonna lie. Not the worst I've ever seen, but definitely time to clean. We should move uh, more CFM after uh, scrub-a-dub-dub -dub here. Yummy. Oh no, I'm spilling. I'm splashing all over the place. Sorry. All 
All right. It's looking good. This is looking pretty good here. Right here. Let me ask him. If we needed to reboot the press drum, not here, but in Portland, uh, like in the server room, does that affect, like, does that take the lights down, take the TVs down, all of that? I've never, I've always said you reboot it before. I don't believe it does. I think everything stops where it's at. Okay. Mike's thinking everything stops exactly where it's at. So if the TVs are on, they'll stay yeah. on. If the lights are on, they'll stay on. Yeah. It doesn't like shut down to zero. It doesn't shut down to zero. So it's like Brunswick. If you were to reboot the server, whatever's on will stay on. Yeah, it should. It should. He feels like yes. Because that's what we had to do here. Because we had to do that here, he said, in Beaver Tank. Mm, paint okay. is, uh, has seen better days, huh? Where's my shop uh, air? Rah! Oh, it got in my eyes. Oh, yeah, all sorts of stuff is coming out. Oh, again, right in the eyes. All right. Yeah. All right. This looks good. It's clean and shiny. Yeah, washer number one here. All right. Washer. That's looking good. Stage two impeller. Looking good. Yep. Cool. Yep, that looks good. It's good, shiny. Nice and shiny. I'm gonna blow that off with some compressed air too while we're here. Okay. Spacer. Looking nice and shiny. Anything else? Our nut. Yes. And don't forget that. It's pretty important. All right. Clean up. Ew. Mm, brown water. Yeah. Cool. I spilled a lot of water, man. Wow. Try and go too fast. Make a mess. All right. Let's start bringing parts back in. We have our base. Okay. Call that stage two. Spacer. Okay. Stage, oh no. It dribbled more schmoo out. I thought I got it all, especially after I blew it out with the compressor. Wrong. I think we're good now. Okay. Let's line this up very carefully. All right, it looks like our impeller housing has been lined back up. Good. Flat washer. Coming back in. Nut. Ooh. Uh oh, dropped it. Can I salvage it? Or do we need the claw? We might need the claw. Bring it in the claw.
I do not wish to open this back up. All right, the claw has it. Now you need to let go. I think we're good there. Half inch socket. All right, started back on. <clears throat> Pardon me. Apparently, there was a power outage. Vice grips. Yeah. Uh, leverage multiplier. That's nice and tight. Awesome. There's still puddles on the workbench here. I didn't realize I had slopped uh, that much of the cleaner around. I made a really big mess. Hmm. Well, at least the workbench is super clean now. <laughs> oh boy. All right. So, if anybody wanted to know, now we've done vacuum motor service too. So now that our vac motor's done being serviced, we're gonna slam it back into the machine. Uh, not literally slam it, but figuratively. Since we've got all this stuff apart, it just kind of occurred to me, we've got really good access to the main drive motor. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna stand the machine up. We're gonna pull the caps off of the brushes we're going to replace the brushes and we're going to blow out all the carbon uh, dust that's accumulated in there. Um, this is a great time to do it. We might as well, well, we're here, right? The part number for these brushes is 1581405B, as in Bravo. So first things first, let's take the cap off while we're here. Super easy to get to right now. We will stand the machine up. Oh, they're still in great shape. Stand the machine up and we will get the cap that's facing down. Right now. I don't want to turn the machine around and stage everything. Um, I want to keep the pace of this still moving forward because this is a side quest um, that we didn't plan on or I didn't plan on when I started. So this is adding extra time. So let's look at our brushes. Here, uh, yeah, they're about 3 16 of an inch down. These were done a couple years ago, but we're here. Drive motor brushes aren't very expensive. It's good insurance. Let's blow this thing out. Oh! Big old cloud of dust came out. Hit it from the other side too. Why not? Yum. Blow everything off while we're here. Cool. Extracurricular activities. All right, let's move around a little bit. Let's do uh, rear side. I need a cap and a flat blade screwdriver. Good. All right, Let's see if we can get this in without too much uh, futzing around. Sometimes these things go in super easy, and sometimes they do not. This one, it's going in. It's being a little difficult. Not terrible, but not the easiest thing in the world either. Please. 
go into your home I'm asking nicely yeah being a little stubborn here whoa I dropped the cap too all right I got it well I got the cap not the motor brushes <laughs> let's make a distinction there what Aha! There we go. Alright, let's take it. <laughs> I started threading it in upside down. Uh, you can't screw it down when the slot is facing the internals of the motor. That's not good. Okay. Oh! I thought I had it, and uh, I let it go, and it went boing. Yeah. No. Well, it is Saturday. Sometimes Saturdays are struggles. Sometimes they are not. All right, cap one in place. Let's move around and do drive motor brush. Number two. Uh, oh crap. I set it down and I don't remember where. Ooh. Failed. Failed. What? Hold on. Let me put you guys on pause while I search for this other motor. No, I found it. I left it on the floor. Hmm. Awesome! This is an ADHD fun. <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know. I didn't plan on doing this today. But here we are. Please go in there, motor brush. Thank you. Oh, and then it came right back out. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Super springy. Please, thank you. The slot is facing the correct direction, yes. And the cap is becoming secure. Good. Very happy with that. It's not uh, too big of a detour for that. Most of our stuff is already out of the way, so. Not a huge project. All right. Now, let's get the... Uh, Zoom you guys in a little bit. Let's get our back motor back on. Stop messing around here. All right, screws are started in the frame washer lock washer and nut come back in oh <laughs> fail failure is always an option son of a bitch <laughs> well if you're gonna do it do it spectacularly. All right, I have a washer and a flat washer started on there. Let's see if I can squeeze my fingers in there and try to get the nut threaded back on. 
not a lot of room to work. All right, we are halfway in there. Now for the other side. Washer and lock washer. The nut. Okay, I think we got that. Yep, started. We need our flat blade screwdriver. I don't know where it's at. Hmm. Ah, there it is. Good. <laughs> Almost there. All right. You elbow coming back in. There we go. The good news is the flange on that vacuum motor housing was good. Sometimes they fall off and you'll have to uh, re epoxy that stem uh, back onto the vacuum motor. I did that last year. I used some really good epoxy uh, so it shouldn't come off for the, the rest of that motor's life. I hope. All right, so we have our clear top guard off. Um, this would be a great time to replace the touchscreen cover. It is starting to peel up on this corner. I want to see if I can get yeah, get my little flat blade in there. We'll peel that off. Uh, we'll clean it with some isopropyl alcohol and a nice microfiber towel and then we will apply a new touchscreen cover if I can find my bottle of rubbing alcohol okay, right here okay nice and shiny Buff out the swirl marks. <laughs> Is there a uh, this side up? Eh, sort of. I've got one cover that's got a, or one corner that's got. only adhesive on three sides. Let's make that the bottom side. So the adhesive is going to be here along the top edges. There's nothing on the bottom. And I don't think that's a huge deal. Let's go right there. This looks good. Press it in firmly. Check. Touch screen cover replaced. Let's bring the uh, shell back on. Wipe out the inside. And the outside. Get nice and shiny. We got our screws. Start 
starting to look like a... Oh! That could have been bad. We skipped a very small but significantly important step here. Um, plugging the vacuum motor back in. That would have been a disastrous mistake. Um, yeah. Good catch. Caught it before it was a problem. Almost done. A little bit more on that. Right there. Okay. Waste recovery tank needs to come back in. Getting a little bit warm back here. There we go. Well, I think we're going to have to start wrapping this up soon. Um, it's starting to get a little late. I need to make sure this thing is totally buttoned up and ready to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we're going to do, we're going to run the vacuum motor and verify that works. Uh, we're going to run the drive motor and verify that works. Um, and then we are going to put the lids on and call it done for today. We didn't get everything done that we wanted to. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's okay. We can um, come back to this next week. Vacuum back on. Vacuum works. Sounds good. Sounds very, very good. We're going to check drive motors. Drive motor works. What I'm going to do is stand this up. And we're going to tell it to drive forward forever. And we're going to give those motors about five minutes of runtime, just on their own, um, to try and help some of those brushes uh, break in. Because we did drive motor brushes, we want to help break them in. If we hit either one of these whiskers, we'll kick the motor up into number two drive speed. Cool. So we're just going to let it run for five minutes on drive speed two, put lids on, call it done. Um, it's unfortunate we didn't get to the oil section, but duty calls, other things have come up. So we'll call it good for this, and uh, we'll come back next week with a part four. Thanks, everybody. I almost forgot that I had to uh, purge the uh, cleaner concentrate lines, too. Oops. So if you guys think that I forgot that, you are absolutely right. But then I caught it, and we're going to do it now. But you don't need to watch all that. But I got it. I didn't, I didn't forget it, okay? Just so you know.